Hello there friends and followers and welcome to this first impressions video of Active Sky XP for x 11. Active Sky XP has been in the making for the past three years. It is a weather injection engine for x 11. What this means is that this plugin will not enhance the visual appearance of your clouds, sky colors and so on and so forth, but rather will take real world meteorological data and inject it into the sim thus creating highly realistic environment in terms of weather such as winds aloft, turbulence, rain and so on and so forth. In this video I will be giving you my first impressions of Active Sky XP and we will be taking a look at the main features of this newly and highly anticipated plugin for X-Plane 11. Let us begin by taking a look at the Active Sky XP user interface and main features. The home tab here provides you with information on the current conditions at your current location, which is by the way Southampton Airport. To the right is the status of the um, plugin connection to the SIM and the AIRAC database. And by the way, this is the latest AIRAC database and I'm happy to report that Navigraph already has support for Active Sky XP. Down here you'll get some news from HiFi regarding the latest hotfixes and other related information to Active Sky XP. Named storms will be displayed here, currently there are none. And down here you'll have the favorite stations uh, with the corresponding matars. Moving to the weather control. The weather control is where you can switch between live weather mode, historical weather and custom weather. You're able to select the mode here or by clicking on the boxes here. You can load a weather file, save a weather file and you can uh, undock as well. The map tab is where you're able to view the aircraft on the world map showing the latest weather around the aircraft. As you can see here, this is the aircraft and we have uh, lots of clouds here in the vicinity. The conditions tab is where you are presented with information related to the current weather conditions at the aircraft position. You are able to also select the weather station that you want information for and you will be given all sorts of information including temperature, dew point, surface winds, visibility, precipitation, pressure, as well as the METAR. You can, by the way, come over here and select um, closest station and as you can see it will display uh, Southampton which is uh, where we are um, at the moment. The Flight Plan tab gives you the ability to enter your departure, destination and alternate airport as well as performance data to get more accurate weather for your flight route. For example, we can put here for the departure airport, Southampton Airport, and the destination is uh, Newcastle Airport, alternate is London Heathrow, and we're going to say 28,000 feet. And now we can select direct GPS, VOR to VOR, or VOR and NDB stations. We're going to select VOR to VOR, and as you can see, we have the VOR station frequencies as well as the altitude and the top of climb and descent uh, as well. So here we're going to begin the, this is the top of climb, this is the top of descent, and this is um, uh, Newcastle Airport, and this is London Heathrow. Now the nice thing, once you do this, you're able to actually listen to an audio briefing of the weather conditions. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and come here and say play voice briefing. Standard weather briefing for Echo Golf Hotel India 2. Echo Golf November Tango. No SIGMETs active for your route of flight. No AIRMETs active for your route of flight. Current weather conditions for your departure. Wind 1, 2, 9 or at 5. Visibility 1, 0. Out. Now the nice thing about this is that it gives you the weather condition at every segment of your flight. As you can see here, this is uh, Southampton, top of climb, and then we have top of descent, uh, Newcastle, as well as the alternate airport. The search tab gives you the ability to search for the type of weather that you want to fly in, whether you want to do a practice or just want to test things out, you know, we want to practice that really difficult approach, uh, crosswind you are able to select the precipitation type, uh, rain, snow, rain and snow, um, the uh, precipitation rate, light, moderate or heavy, and the same thing here for visibility, you can select the visibility, cloud ceiling, wind speed, as well as thunderstorms. Um, so we can actually go to precipitation here and select rain, and we'll say we want heavy rain, and then we could say um, thunderstorms, moderate, there's nothing there, light and moderate, 
uh, or high and as you can see now we have some stations there now if you navigate to that station you will definitely see um, the weather that is depicted here and based on my tests um, of um, active sky speed the actual data actual the actual meteorological data that's being transferred and injected into the sim is very very accurate so I've ran tests um, using the default um, X-Plane engine, which is not very accurate, but FS Global Real Weather and Active Sky XP gave pretty much the same results. So then I took, took those results and compared them to Weatherbug and Weather.com and other um, weather in, um, information websites. And I have found the information not just to be accurate, but it is actually updated. Um, so you, you actually get the latest weather conditions uh, using Active Sky XP. On the left side of Active XP's um, user interface, we have the Options tab. Now the options, I'm not going to go through all the options in this uh, particular video. We'll save that for some other video later. Um, but I do want to show you a few things here. Uh, I do have the Vatsim Online Weather selected. Um, because it will actually enable significant stations for the user flight plan, departure, destination, alternate. And I do fly on Batsim every now and then. So it's very useful to have this option tick. You will get less stations uh, with this item unchecked. Um, another thing I want to show you guys is use Navigraph data uh, for VR and NDBs. I have that checked as well. And simulator depiction options, uh, hurricanes, of course, depict hurricanes, use global static depiction mode. When the use global static depiction mode is checked, Active Sky XP will behave in a similar fashion to the NOAA weather plugin where the weather is the same across the globe. So it will download the meteorological data for your current position and then replicate that across the globe. Now, this is, of course, it has its advantages and disadvantages. My preference is to uncheck this button and make sure that you get the latest weather for increased realism. As far as the cloud options, I have left everything here on default, or actually, to be honest, I copied the settings I have for P3D, but I'm going to save this for another video, and I do want to test each and every option and what are the performance considerations, if any, uh, for those options before I give you my uh, final remarks on, on these options and how to properly configure them. The textures that come with Active Sky XP are, mm, I don't like them personally. Uh, there are two sets. One is a high quality, um, high definition uh, textures and the other is a low performance uh, textures uh, for those of you running low-end machines. Um, I don't really recommend those. I'm For this video I'm using um, X-Vision and by the way X-Vision has been updated to support the latest um, RC1 uh, for X-Plane 11.3. So Release Candidate 1 is supported. Now X-Vision has released an update so you can go ahead and grab it. All right, the rest of this information is debug logs database. Um, we don't really need this information here in this video. Um, let's go ahead now and take a look at a really cool in-sim feature of Active Sky XP. One of the nice in-sim features of Active Sky XP is the ability to listen to a realistic ATIS. Now, if we uh, click here and you can achieve this by tuning to 122.0 on your comm radio, Echo Gulf Hotel India Airport Information Juliet 1420 Zulu Weather Wind 129 at 5 Visibility 10000 Sky Condition 1400 Scattered Temperature 9 Dew Point 7 QNH 1005 Advice on Initial con as you can see here, we can listen to a realistic ATIS. Uh, this is, of course, a feature that um, P3D users and FSX users are very familiar with. Uh, it is now available in X-Plane. Um, and uh, by the way, if you have a flight plan, if you program the flight plan, you'll be able to listen to the ATIS, uh, both for the um, origin and destination airports using the, fre the comp frequencies assigned to those functions. All right, well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the aircraft for a short flight and we're going to hopefully we can get some turbulence and see some of the effects. So I'm going to release the parking brake 
And we'll bring the yoke back and let's give it full power. By the way, Orbex uh, Great Britain Central has been released. Um, there has been, of course, a lot of news all over the place uh, on the release of Orbex Central. And it is as good as uh, Great Britain South. Really beautiful scenery uh, by Orbex for X-Plane. Uh, I'm probably going to do a video uh, later on next week. Very slight winds there. Uh, as we uh, depart Southampton, I'm going to reduce props. Oops, I have an um, X camera. There, there we go. As you can see, slight wind, and you can see the aircraft. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the aircraft to a higher altitude so we can take a look at the clouds uh, from a higher elevation. To do this, we're going to click on M and we're going to click on the aircraft and we're just going to move the aircraft up like that. There we go. By the way, the preset I'm using in this video for XP um, X Vision is um, a new preset. Um, I found the sky colors and the saturation to be a lot nicer. Uh, I will provide you with a link to the preset in the description section of the video if you're interested. Really, really nice. The release of Active Sky XP for X-Plane 11 is without a doubt an important event for the flight sim community. It underscores the significance of X-Plane 11 as a flight simulator. We have been seeing a lot of the big players coming to X-Plane such as Orbex, Turbulent Design, Just Flight and now Active Sky. Uh, the plugin itself, in my opinion, is very well made. We have received some updates to fix some of the issues but it definitely works as advertised. It does take real world meteorological data, it injects it into the sim. Uh, I still haven't tested, uh, for example, uh, wind drafts and things like that, uh, but it works well as far as winds aloft, as far as the representation of cloud layers and turbulence. Um, I'm gonna leave the details for another video. This is a first impressions video. Uh, I'm going to be doing another video during the week of um, FS Global Real Weather with SkyMax Pro version 4.7 and the Real Weather Connector. And then I will leave the comparison video between SkyMax and FS Global Real Weather for my usual Saturday videos. Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in today for this short show. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching and bye-bye for now.